um, starting with the superintendent, I'd um, like each of you to please tell us your thoughts about this staffing change and how you think it will make a difference for students. Good afternoon, everybody. So first, thank you, and I appreciate the opportunity to be at this forum and to have the conversation and really do want to engage in a conversation about why. I mean, this is clearly a, a strategy where we're choosing to staff in a certain way, but really starting with the why even engage in this conversation. I, I think we're really all clear in this room that what's happening for our young people in Oakland is not okay. And in East and West Oakland in particular, with the unemployment rate being between 35 and 50 percent for African American Latino males, we are in a situation where clearly in a partnership with the entire community, we haven't provided what our kids need. If they're not having access to meaningful work, that they are not only employed and engaged civically, that they don't have the resources and backing and didn't have the opportunity to be able to start by participating uh, in the world of work when they finished high school. Many of those kids were pushed out of the system. We have a very high push out rate, right? We have, at, in particular, these three schools, um, even below the district average for high school graduation, which is just over 55%, which means that when a group of kids start, just, just under half of them right, are leaving before they finish. So for me, the, the reason to do this is that we haven't done what we need to do for our kids. And I really do think that, in particular, at these three schools, uh, McClyman's, Fremont, and Castlemont, as those three schools go, so goes the future of Oakland. And for me, uh, following this design process, so this has been a process that's been going on for two years now. Uh, there's a big budget issue in Oakland, right? We got the district back from state control. We had a, a $40 million structural deficit. So the expenses were $40 million greater than our ongoing revenue. And the district had taken the full $100 million loan. So we've had to cut resources. So in each of my years here, we've cut more than $60 million right, out of the budget. Um, school closures, layoffs, and in two of these sites, actually in all three of these sites, we've closed what were multiple schools to go to a single site. The difference with um, Fremont and Castlemont this year is we closed the other school that was on the McClyman campus last year, and now at these schools, um, there have been a design process and staff would have to be applying for those jobs in that new um, school. And we were talking a lot about what, what's the right condition? How can we be clear that creating the conditions for these kids to have access to the staffing and to the training and the support they need to be prepared for the world of career after college? And so I, I think this college or career question is, is really a, a problem. I, you don't go to school to go to more school, period. You go to school, if you go to more school, you're going to work after that. Sometimes you go to work right after school. But too many of our kids are actually not getting employed. And we are in partnership with not only other community organizations, the community colleges. I think um, just to say that really doing a scan of the workforce analysis and the job availability. And so the, the link learning and the redesign of the pathways at these three schools, we, do, we need to staff these schools with enough time for teachers to collaborate, enough time for those teachers to work with young people Many of the concerns are that the kids are not prepared when they get there. So we need to be able to bridge and welcome those kids in and also do design work with young people. Um, the other thing is, as we're doing more linked learning work, connecting the world of the content into the, what we actually want kids to know and be able to do, uh, there's actually some training and some externships work with people who are in industry. So we say, how can you actually support that and not just continue to ask teachers to do that on their own time? So we need more time to do that. Um, so in conversation with um, not only the OEA executive board, but in meetings with uh, OEA representation, uh, union president, just a lot of conversation about how could we match staff and how can we go through this process. Um, but at the end of the day, I thought that we have an opportunity to extend the year, the work year, to 204 days for teachers to actually have a common job description across these three schools 
And grounded in the strategic plan, the expectation is that we would accelerate performance because these kids are far away from being ready. And at 18, they need to be ready to either go into the world of work or a two-year or a credential program or a certificate program. Kids need to be ready to perform. And I have the expectation that every one of our kids should and will be ready. Um, too many of our kids are too far away from that. So some of the, the questions about um, acceleration, why acceleration? Um, I actually am not apologizing for acceleration. Uh, we, our kids are too far away from where they need to be and we need more resources as adults and more time to help get them there. Uh, so the teacher on special assignment is uh, described in the union agreement, the agreement between the district and the Oakland Education Association. Uh, so for me, taking the step to staff all of the teacher positions, that's pretty aggressive. Um, that's not, it's not been used that way before, the teacher on special assignment. However, uh, and there was conversation about doing an extended contract and so teachers, some should be able to opt in. Uh, I really thought it was important that there was a common, clear expectation that people would say, I want to be part of this mission, this vision, this is the skills, these are the skills, these are the talents I bring to that for these kids and uh, have that common across these three schools. So we're choosing to invest uh, just probably be about $500,000 more. Uh, the board set both a high school priority, we need to improve and accelerate our high schools, and then specifically uh, funding priority around McClyman's. So kind of following the board directive in the strategic plan, and the two-year design process, we're now going to a staffing model for teachers on special assignment. But you have to really look at the data, where the kids are now. So paying teachers more to do work uh, with kids for a longer year. And the clarifying that keeps coming up, are we changing the school year for kids? No. So it's still 180 days, but in many of uh, the experiences of staff in this room and others, they do summer bridge programs, they invite the kids before the year, those kids come. There's leadership retreats after the school year, those kids actually come. And the other thing is when adults are on the campus, as many of the other providers are, we're going to actually leverage more support for the students because there's actually structure there for them. So um, not to go too long, I know there's going to be a lot of questions. That's the big frame, but it really starts from what are the students' needs? What's the design of the program that we think is actually going to move them closest to where they need to be to be um, fully participating young adults in the city of Oakland and beyond? And then how do we, as adults responsible in the system, staff and move our resources to support that? So that's really how it all fits together, and I'll answer questions later. But it's just grounded in we're doing all of the asset mapping, looking at the East Bay workforce and economic development plans, looking at regional health care. <coughs> We've got to get kids ready, and I think we can do it in these three schools with a staffing model.